Hi and welcome to this video and as you can see the Mini is now all back together. So what I've done in this video is I've replaced the DPF, put that all back together, put the front modular section back on which is the um, cooling system radiator and the air conditioning condenser, those are back on. Obviously the wheel arch liners are on, outer bumper, the oil's back in, the coolant's back in and the battery is now connected. So technically she's now ready for me to just press start and hopefully she comes to life and the timing's not out or anything like that. Shouldn't be. Um, so hopefully it is just a case to press the button and it should go. Um, but what I'll do is I'm going to push the car out the garage because I'm a little bit paranoid about diesel runaway after buying a Nissan x -Trail and that had suffered diesel runaway. So I don't want to risk that because the garage would fill with smoke. I wouldn't be able to see anything. Um, be a disaster. And obviously the risk of fire because I've obviously rebuilt this and something may be leaking or something like that. So I think it's safer just to push it out the garage and start it outside. So yeah, so that's basically this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you can like and subscribe, that obviously helps the channel. And many thanks for watching and have a good weekend. So we start by refitting the diesel particulate filter. So it might be worth having a photo just to remind us of how it actually looked in situ before we removed it and the various parts. So that's what we're aiming for. Here you can actually see the alignment of the strap and the temperature probe port. So that's worth noting that when you come to fix this back together. Right then, so let's start putting this together. So the DPF is the lower section and the catalytic converter is the higher part. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of ceramic grease on here. Um, not sure whether you should actually do that or not. Um, but it should help me just with the alignment. Because I am going to have to keep rotating this to try and line it up with the exhaust. And also the lower differential pipe. So we've got a couple of things that have got to try and fit there. Okay, so we'll get the gauze seal on. That stays at the top of the DPF. That just stays there. And then if we're very careful, we should be able to just lower the catalytic converter onto it. Just skim that. And then hopefully that grease will help that slip on. Perfect. So we do need to line this up obviously with the turbo and the exhaust pipe under the car. So I'm just going to try and get it into the rough position. And then what we do is we put the strap on and that is held on with a 13mm socket. I have put a bit of copper slip on there as well just to help with removing that in the future. So that bolt needs to line up with the temperature probe, otherwise the heat shield won't fit back on. And there is just a quick reminder there of the two heat shields. Okay, so again I'm just going to put a little bit of copper slip on the these two mounting studs. Because this was all very seized when I tried to remove it originally. So we just pop the backing heat shield on first. Slide that on and then we can sort of offer up the DPF, just sort of poke that down there past the air conditioning pipe. So that's roughly in position now. So we can put the two bolts on there and again that's tightened with a 13mm socket. So this top clip is actually quite troublesome. Um, I was struggling quite a bit there and in the end I actually asked my wife just to pop in to give me a hand and then it went straight on. So here we are still struggling and in the next shot <laughs> it's, it's in place. So again, so this bolt, I'm going to put a bit of copper slip on as well. 
and don't tighten it up too much because again you've got a heat shield there and if it's not in the right position the heat shield won't sit down fully so pop that on there and that one's actually tightened with a 16 millimeter um, spanner really for that But like I say, don't tighten it too much because you do need to be able to adjust all this to get it into position. So we just tighten these up now. That's with the 13 millimeter socket. And again, I'm just gonna put copper slip on basically all the fasteners in this area because was, as you can see, it was heavily corroded and a lot of this stuff didn't want to come out so hopefully this will sort of cover me in the future right so i'm just undoing that a bit there just to give me a bit more movement now um, so i can try to roughly align it with the exhaust so with it loose i can just sort of move it a bit but like i say like the differential pipe connector there is actually going to be one of the biggest issues out so although it's aligned with that I think you need to leave it loose till you get that differential pipe on because that was a struggle so I wouldn't tighten it up really at this stage um, till you've got the other pipe on All right then so so then we've got this sort of turbo um, interconnecting pipe here so again I did this in the wrong order because I s started to fit this on first and forgot there's actually a lower heat shield that has to go on so I was just putting a smear of silicon grease on there just to help with that when I come to fit it but like I say you've you've got to fit the um, lower heat shield in first so just remove the two, two fasteners there with a 10 millimeter socket, like so. So that then slots in because the front shield actually bolts onto that as well. So as you can see, I've now had to move the um, turbo exhaust clamp because it's interfering with that heat shield. So you need to sort of get that in the right position then you can tighten that up with a 16 millimeter um, spanner and then the heat shield should better now uh, just screw down with a 10 millimeter socket so we just so that's got a ball head on it that one and then this one's just normal Okay, so now what we need to do is actually go to the front heat shield because again, once you put this on, it's actually going to interfere with the one of the screws for the front heat shield. So I realised that as I put that down, I thought I'm not going to get to the screw. So again, a little bit too quick there. I just leave that there and get the heat shield. So again, I'm putting in some copper slip there just to make those hopefully come out in the future. Okay, so although this heat shield actually does cover up that strap, um, what you can do is put the heat shield on and perhaps leave some of the screws on the right hand side off just so you can get a spanner in there and either just tighten the strap up on the DPF part once you've actually got those differential pipes in position because like I said I'd done all this up and then I couldn't actually get the differential pipe in at the very bottom near the oil sump so anyway, we get all these screws in so these are with a 10 millimeter socket so there's quite a bit goes on when you've got all this emission control equipment does add a fair bit of complexity to 
what would normally be quite simple. They've actually done quite well really to sort of shoehorn all of this into the front of the engine. Okay, so now we can slide this interconnecting pipe in like so and then that's a 10 millimeter socket there so that's just going to be gently tightened and then a seven millimeter um, socket for the jubilee clip okay so that's all in position so it's now on to the temperature sensor we'll pop that in again i've put a little bit of copper grease on that just to help that go in and then that's tightened with a 14 millimeter spanner um, and I think that's to about 30 newton meters so we just clip our cable in I'm going to have to cable tie mine because a little bit of plastic's broken on there that should just hold that there nicely okay so it's coming together now so now on to the differential pipes so this is where the games start because you've obviously got to feed that in there and get it below because of the air conditioning pipe so this is where I'm just about to hurt myself I don't like watching this. That really hurt. That went right into my finger, that did. Um, yeah, there was a really sharp piece of metal there from when I was using the Stilsons to undo that nut. And that went in quite deep. Couldn't get it out with my teeth. All right, so yeah so moving on from that we put the actual sensor um, electrical sensor on there so that's a Torx 25 and that actually fixes to the dipstick so we pop that in Right, so then we can connect that. Like so. So then it's just focusing now on the actual lower pipe. So I've actually sp sped this up because I had a lot of trouble getting that pipe in there. Um, so I had to, it was actually starting to cross thread as well. So it was a bit of a disaster just happening. But eventually I managed to get it in there and then obviously I can tighten this other this is an absolute mess this nut there as you can see very sharp um, don't want to be touching that so I can then put the clamp back on because removing this clamp obviously made things a little bit easier and that's with a 10 millimeter socket and then finally obviously the connection between the DPF and the exhaust pipe under the car okay so let's get some oil in before I forget so I thought in case I start getting carried away and actually forget about oil probably best get it in there now while I'm thinking about it so this is actually clean oil it's only been run through the engine when I was testing the fuel uh, the oil pump so although it's pretty black it is actually clean right so that's in okay and then I'm just going to prime the system as well you can actually hear that going back into the fuel tank so hopefully that's the filter refilled pop the cover on there everything's looking good okay then so the next job is now to refit the modular front end. And we'll have a couple of photos here just to remind us of what the front end actually looked like and all the different pipes. We've also got to connect this air conditioning um, condenser screw there and obviously the turbo intercooler. 
So this would be easier with two people. So we've got to lift it up and just tuck it underneath the air conditioning um, bracket like that. I doubt very much if that air conditioning system actually has any refrigerant in it now. The amount of messing around that's had. I'll be very surprised if there was any in it. Okay, so we're line that up. So this is where the two bolt threads were handy that you screw in at the front of the um, bumper rails to stop that sort of falling off. So I've remembered that now, so I'm just going to pop those in. That does mean that it's not going to fall on you when you start trying to pull it backwards and forwards and connecting it. All the different things. Okay. So we'll have a go at this radiator now. So we've got the plastic clip here. So we've got to hold these both in. It's, it's amazing how difficult it is to remember how these things went together when you took them apart sort of three months ago. So the one thing I missed here was you've actually got to make sure the bottom of the radiator is in. I thought it was, but actually it wasn't. It had to go further back. So I'm just going to screw the top in. So for that, so there's the bracket. That clips the two together. And then that's a Torx 25 for the self-tapping screws there. And then the same again on the other side. Like I said, I'd be very surprised if the air conditioning actually does work on this, this car after all that messing around. And then we've also got a bolt at the bottom there that holds the um, just here. So this is a 10 millimeter socket for this, and this sort of holds the air conditioning junction there to the modular front end. Okay, so we can now go on to the intercooler. So this actually needs to be up the right way. So there's like a plastic shark tail there you just where my hands are now and that basically interferes and stops it going together I think so then if you flip it over it then all fits together quite nicely so I have put again a bit of silicon grease on the end of this just to help these pipes slide straight on like that it does make life a little bit easier so I've just realised here now that the bottom of the radiator isn't in as far as it should be. So there was a second sort of um, protrusion there that holds that radiator and then the air conditioning condenser clips in on the front. So we can tighten that all up now. So that's a Torx 25 for all of those fasteners. And then we just need to go under the car and tighten those two turbo pipes. And that's a 7mm socket for those. Like that. Okay, so you also do need to clip the cooling pipe up. So obviously it's now to do the screen wash reservoir, so that's a photo there just so you know all the connections there. I'm obviously going to sort of speed this up a bit, um, because obviously you you will have removed it yourself, so you probably will remember how it all went in. But that photo there will show you anyway if you had actually forgotten. So the first thing to do is obviously just get that hooked in at the top with one of those plastic rivets 
and then obviously just connect everything up inside the wheel arch. So the two screws there are Torx 25 and then you've got to feed the pipe around the headlights. Okay so now on to the cooling pipes. So I've had to replace the two because they've rusted out. So I've just gone for two normal Jubilee clips there. I didn't realise how expensive the, the other ones were. Um, very expensive. So I'll go with the Jubilee clips I think. So I've bought a couple of those. And then we mustn't forget the power to the fan. Get that on there. Just tuck that down. Again that should clip to the housing of the fan. And then we've got the expansion bottle now. So I put a bit of um, silicone grease on there but I put a little bit too much on and the pipe was actually sliding um, straight back off again. So you probably don't really need much at all. So I've obviously put the bottom one on that just clips on on its own with a little spring clip and then the two pipes on the side like so and then just clip it in at the front and then that's secured with a self-tapping screw. So it's a Torx 25 for that self-tapping screw. And then we better get this turbo pipe connected. Pop that on. It's definitely starting to look a bit like a car now. And a 7mm socket there for that, for the Jubilee clip. Don't forget to connect the headlights. And then we need to screw all this front end, or modular front end as they call it. MFE I think in the book. So that's the fixing locations. So that's a 13mm socket and these are tightened to 22 newton meters. So it's not too tight. And then we've got the one for the headlight and that's a 10 millimeter socket and then obviously repeat the same on the other side i'm trying to put the screws back in the same place um, i'm trying to look for the markings so it keeps the alignment still there for the when the bonnet goes down So at least all these screws are actually going back in considering how difficult it was for them to be removed. So it might be worth just popping a bit of oil in there for the bonnet release just to help that. Again my plastic bits on here were broken so I'll be cable tying that just to make sure that doesn't come off. And then don't forget the pipe for the screen wash. So like I said, I'm going to cable tie that just in case something happened and then I wasn't able to open the bonnet. Okay, right then, so now to refill the coolant. So that's a 50-50 mix. This is the original coolant. Um, again, I'm just going to use all the old, um, I say all the old fluids, mostly the old fluids. I'm obviously not using the old oil. Um, until I actually know that the car's going to run and everything. I don't want to put fresh fluids in for it to be wasted. Okay then, so now to refit the bumper carrier. And again, a quick reminder there just to show what the bumper carrier looks like before we removed it off the car. So there's our 13mm nuts and the Torx 20 screws. So since my carrier is in quite bad shape I'm definitely going to pop a bit of copper grease 
on these stanchions here just to help with removing this again later on so I think I might have to actually remove this and try and tidy it up and give it a bit of paint in the near future so these four bolts are popped in and tightened up with a 16 millimeter socket and eventually they will be tightened to 100 newton meters but what I'll do is I'll put the nuts and fasteners on at the front first because that's going to push things around a little bit and then I'll tighten those with the torque wrench to the 100 newton meters so like I say as these go on it's just going to push it back a bit so it's six nuts there and they're put on with a 13 millimeter socket and then the little screws are put on with the Torx 20 so there's one on each side or should I say two on each side top and bottom that just holds the plastic in there this is quite unreal to think none of these screws even these screws wouldn't come out and I think I had to heat these screws to actually get them out it's in quite bad shape really so thankfully everything is actually going back together in better shape than it was when it was removed right okay so now to refit the outer bumper the wheel arch trim and the inner wheel liners and again here's some photos just to remind us of the front bumper and there's our ambient temperature sensor so don't forget to connect that the connections for the horn and the two liners the wheel arches um, and how they connect in so thankfully this is fairly simple you just going to lift it up like so and then pop the self-tapping torx screws in so that's a torx 25 for these one each side then we've got a couple on the edges as well so you drop that one starting to get a little bit anxious um, because obviously I want the car actually on the road so that's almost the excitement is starting to come in now as it's actually really coming together um, put my grill on what's left of it most of that's broken and then that's held in at the top by four plastic push rivets like I said the quality of this model is not the same as the R50 it does seem to be a bit of a quality difference in materials um, It's like that that bonnet also catches on the lights a little bit um, I definitely think the R50 is a um, seems a little bit more impressive in certain areas compared to this one but the advantage of this one with that diesel engine in is it will do something like 70 miles to the gallon and tax is only about 30 pounds a year so compared to the R50 that's quite considerable okay so now onto the wheel arch liners obviously mine tore in half just talking about quality um, on the R50 that's a nice piece of plastic that actually would not be able to tear in half so it's Torx 27 for these liner screws to each side and then you've got a lot of pop rivets so now on with the road wheels and they're tightened to 140 newton meters and that's a 17 millimeter socket so I'm trying to speed things up a bit because the video is going on longer than I actually thought I didn't think it was going to take this long to actually get all this back together okay so she is back together and she's back on the ground so very close to the moment of trying to start the car 
hopefully she will just fire up so nearly forgot the air intake and the battery in all the excitement so let's pop this down dare I say it again that this one's broken on mine it seems to all just be hanging in there um, yeah back to the old quality different material quality isn't it all right so let's pop our battery on now I know this battery is pretty dead I've tried to keep it on charge um, but it's not in great health but it still started the car before it came in the garage so no reason it won't start the car leaving the garage but probably could do with a new battery at some time so that's a 10 millimeter socket there to tighten that and it's only to five newton meters okay so it has been fully charged although its capacity is considerably reduced now i suspect it's pretty old that battery all right so we've got power i'm not starting the car in the garage so i will push it outside so like I said at the beginning of the video, because of the fear of diesel runaway or fire, I think it's safer if this is taken outside for the initial startup, just in case there's any leaks or something and fuel starts spraying around the engine bay. So at least it's moving. So I freed all the brakes up. So that has made life a lot easier to try and push the car because I don't think it pushed at all before. Okay then, and here's some reference photographs which you can pause to view for longer. So there we are, there's our DPF and the oil filter and the oil cooler. Our temperature sensor on the DPF and the DPF itself showing the alignment. So one good thing is this DPF doesn't seem to be blocked. So that's pretty good news. So there's our seven fixing holes there for the heat shield. And then we move on to the modular front end where we can see all the fan and that. So there's our radiators and the screw on there. There's also the cooling fan resistor there and the thermal fuse I believe and then there's all our connections there for the screen wash bottle and then the fasteners for the modular front end there we are so then moving on to the corroded inner bumper carrier and the fixings for that and then we can go on to the front bumper and then have a look inside the front bumper there at the temperature sensor and the connections for the horn and then the wheel arch decorative strips there and all the plastic pop clips okay and just one of the wheel arch liner there so you've been watching refitting the DPF filter, the MFV, and finishing the build on a 2009 Mini R56. And thank you for watching, and I hope this video helps you service and maintain your car within your budget. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in June 2022, and I can be found on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as Coots and Gators.